Hey everyone, my name is Tegan. Welcome back to Tandy Rose. <laughs> hello, 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 hello. He's not meant to be upstairs right now. Hello. He's eating my hand. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about a book that came out recently. I had an advanced ebook, like advanced reader copy of it, but I was very behind on my review, so I don't have it to show. And I don't have a physical copy to talk about yet. But today we're going to be talking about The Girl Who Felt Beneath the Sea by Axie O. And again, I received a copy of this from NetGalley in exchange for an honest review. So The Girl Who Felt Beneath the Sea is this feminist retelling of the Korean myth of Shim Chong, I believe. A tale that I knew nothing about before picking up this book, but now I'm strangely in awe of. The book opens with Mina, who is our protagonist and our narrator, who is volunteering or maybe sacrificing herself as a seagull's bride to spare her brother and the girl that he loves. She's swept away to the spirit realm, setting out to wait the sea god and bring an end to the storms that have left the entire villages in despair once and for all. However, she does not have much time because a human cannot survive long in the spirit realm and there are many people who will do anything to stop the sea god from waking. Chloe Gong described this book as a tale brimming with love and I do think that's the most accurate description. It's a story about family and friendship and loyalty from the start. The opening scene is literally Mina sacrificing herself to save her brother and his, his girlfriend. <laughs> There's a lot of scenes that are flashbacks to conversations between Mina and her grandmother as well to have this like family bond there as well. And it was just a very lovely way to incorporate this relationship into the plot because it's so unique to all the others in the story. And it didn't feel distracting from the main storyline like at all for a moment. The world is beautiful. It's creative and lively and gorgeously written in a way that makes it feel like it was written by like a fantasy writer who has decades of experience, but is still accessible to readers who are new to the genre. It's been a while since I felt so engrossed by a world and I was just fully lost in these pages and couldn't stop thinking about it when I put the book down. I'm also very fond of the side characters too. I've somehow never seen or know anything about Spirited Away so I did not catch on to some of these like tw like character twists that other readers were familiar with and also I don't feel like not seeing Spirited Away did not f affect my experience at all. <laughs> um, we meet a lot of characters very quickly at the beginning of the book like a lot of characters but it's not overwhelming in a way that I would usually find it to be and all the characters feel unique and distinguishable, and most importantly, they all feel relevant to the story. I originally rated this book like a full five stars because I was blown away when I put it down. But after having some time to like dwell on it and process it, I lowered my rating to four stars for three reasons. The first reason is the pacing. The middle of the book felt very rushed, which I almost forgave because Mina's time in the spirit world was very limited but the ending dragged out longer than I could like force myself to stay interested. The second reason, again, about the ending, is the ending itself and the events leading up to it. I'm trying to stay vague so it's like spoiler free, so this may not make any sense to you, but it does to me. <laughs> so a lot of the issues throughout Mina's journey were solved very quickly and very easily. And the entire book you are building up to this finale of waking the sea god and it felt so easy and all the other i was fine because everything felt like everything else felt easy so i thought okay it's just going to be an easy resolution but it was i felt confused and unsatisfied the third reason is mina herself she's a great character i say she's actually a good character and being good is her defining trait in many ways. I also very much enjoyed her perspective but I feel like I know limited things about her other than the fact that she wants to save her family and her village and overall do the right thing. I wish she had a little more depth and qualities that weren't just you know patience and bravery and virtue. But overall I very much enjoyed her perspective. I think she was there to serve a purpose rather than be a person. That's one way of putting it. Overall, this was a beautiful read with some fun side characters, a vibrant world, and it was a truly wonderful introduction for me specifically to Korean folklore. I rated this book four stars on good four stars on Goodreads, but it's maybe a 4.5. I had some very nitpicky issues with it. And overall, thank you for watching this video. I hope that you have the chance to pick up this book if you haven't already and to enjoy it yourselves. And I will see you next time. Bye.